Hello, Vikas, and uh, hello, Ajay. Hello, hi. It's very nice to see you here and to have you join us today. And I uh, believe that our audience are looking forward to hearing the stories about the museum and your project. But before we start the interview, I suggest that we could quickly introduce ourselves. So for myself, my name is Hong Xi Zhao, Program Manager of World Monuments Fund. And I've been uh, working in the conservation health, cultural heritage field for two decades. And I joined uh, World Monuments Fund in 2013. I participate our conservation and educational project in India, Turkey, China, Japan, South Korea, Mongolia, Bhutan, Nepal, among other Asian countries. So I will be your host of interview of today. And uh, how about you, uh, Vikas? Uh, well, good morning. I'm Vikas Dilavri, conservation architect. I've been in practice of conservation for the last three decades and uh, uh, I'm extensively practicing conservation. I was also the head of department of uh, conservation uh, in a, a master's course uh, from 2007 to 2014. And it was uh, it's a wonderful uh, opportunity to talk to you all and share our experiences. Hi, I'm Ajay Kuzle, yes. and director with the CSNVS. Last 24 years, I'm associated with the CSNVS. I'm mainly looking into the general administration as a finance and the project. And I'm the in charge of this state project for which we're going to discuss. Great. Thank you. Thank you for both uh, for joining us today. So uh, our first question is about the background of the museum. So could you briefly introduce the museum to our audience? First of all, thank you. It is a really a proud moment for all of us at the Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Bhusu Samira in the CSA Invest to be recognized with an award of excellence, highest of UNESCO's uh, Asia Pacific Award for Cultural Heritage Preservation. Hmm. It is a, a momentous occasion for us and it is because it was received in the, it was declared in the centenary year of the CSMS. CSMS is now a hundred year old organization, formerly known as the Prince of Wales Museum of Western India. It was, it came into existence in 1909 by an act of then government presidency. In fact, actually, the outcome of this uh, project was that the successful uh, participation of the then uh, prominent citizens of the Bombay, who that time actually came together and understood the cultural requirement of the 20th century Bombay and suggested to the Bombay presidency that time to form, to establish a museum and be the object that it should be set up should be an educational and not mere show museum, uh, not a museum for the display. In fact, the construction of the museum building was completed in 1914. However, thereafter it was used as an hospital during the World War and then for the children's welfare exhibition and then again as a hospital during the influenza pandemic from 1918 to 1920. And thereafter, the building was handed over to the trustees of the CSMS in 1921. And then on 10th January 1922, it was formally opened to the public as a museum. After the uh, main uh, block of the building, in 1932, was, uh, extension was added. And with the continuous development, even the last decade also, museum added visitors facility center, children's museum. Over the past 100 years, Encyclopedic collections of the museum has increased and now over 70,000 objects, more than 20 galleries, narrating the story of uh, human, uh, so narrating the human story, particularly of the uh, Indian subcontinent, right from the prehistoric period to the present. Today, the museum is a grade one heritage building. It is a uh, cultural space, also a social space and a space for uh, making communities of people coming together and engaging with the dialogue and the sharing the uh, ideas. Hmm. Architecturally, uh, architecturally, it's one of the finest examples of indo saracenic architecture. Uh, and it's one of the most refined examples uh, in Mumbai of the 20th century. Uh, Mumbai city, or as Bombay as it was known, was earlier a 19th century city which was famous for its Gothic revival architecture. Mm -hmm. But by the turn of the century, uh, it was decided to have a museum for Western India, and that's the reason why it it has uh, traces of Indo-Saracenic. 
Great, great. Thank you. Thank you. It's really good to know more about the museum. And uh, so our following question is that, uh, could you introduce your award-winning project to us? We like to know the design and development of this project, for example, like your rationale, the objective of the project, and your strategies, and so on. Museum is a great one heritage building, and always trustees of the museum has given importance and priority for the preventive maintenance and the uh, restoration of the periodic restoration of the museum time to time. Even I would like to mention here that in 2010 also museum received UNESCO award for commendable conservation of the museum building under the leadership of our Director General Sarvasashi Mukherjee. Sarvasashi Mukherjee being a head of the institute has a vision for the future of the institute to uh, ensure the growth and retain its relevance to the society. In 2022, to commemorate our sanctuary, museum has undertaken the study of uh, upgrading its drawing of the great heritage, repairing the fabric status report, and also conducting a special study on the dome of the museum. And based on this fabric status report, the museum has prepared the comprehensive plan of the interior and exterior restoration of the museum building, involving structural repairs and refurbishment which was started in October 2019 with a generous grant from the T-States Foundation. It would be apt to mention here that in the 1970s also the dome was restored with a support from the Tatars. So the museum has always been fortunate to have someone who has come forward to donate money to sponsor the project and have the freedom and flexibility to implement and execute it in the finest of the uh, in finest of the manners, which it which it desires. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you, Vikas and Ajay. Uh, so, uh, following this question, do you think what are the main reasons, like the the particular qualities or innovations of this project, that led to win this international recognition from the UNESCO? And uh, uh, and how how what's the what's the main reason you think that's really really important to 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 win this award? Yeah, well, uh, as I said, as Ajay mentioned, we were very fortunate uh, that the museum has always received a good amount of you know donation or uh, funding. So funding has been always a concern, and if you have a good funding, which happens, uh, you are able to execute all the works into the perfection in which you want. And we were very fortunate that the TCSF, which is Tata Consultancy Service Foundation, was there. That was the first thing which was there. Second, uh, as, as I mentioned, it was a very well-conceived project to celebrate and to take care of the future growth. So it was, uh, uh, you know, all the work started way back in 2016, where we started upgrading the as-built drawings, conducting studies to understand the dome, which is in concrete. And as you all know, that concrete has a life. And what we found from the studies was that the repairs which were done in 1970s, you know, they had worked out in a special manner, has enhanced the life, and that's the reason why the dome was found to be in a safe condition, which was very satisfying. And the other things were that when you're dealing with a building which is of 20th century, you're dealing with two materials. You're dealing with a modern material which is concrete, and you're also dealing with traditional materials that like the load-bearing walls, and the lime water which has been there. So we had to address both these uh, both these materials in in very particular manner. Somewhere where the concrete had lived its life, we had to recast new slabs. We had to do repairs and we had to strengthen it using the kind of technology which is appropriate for that. On the other hand, we also had to revive which which is already revived as the traditional skills of the uh, traditional materials, which is stone, lime water, and things like that. Mm. And uh, th I think that was the a major thing. Uh, one of the other important thing was the, the museum was now stepping into the next century. So it had to cater to its new requirements of better lighting, uh, better, you know, the refurbishment had to incorporate all these details. So what we, what we conceived and what we executed was how the original architect would have done it in the present day, we, we try to follow the principles of second man respecting the first person's creation. I think that was a major thing. The lighting played a very important role, highlighting and unifying the building with all uh, within the cohesiveness which we wanted. 
And lastly, we it was a very massive project, a very holistic project, and we dis, we divided it into phases, and we got it implemented with different executing agencies. I think that was a plus point, and uh, that's uh, good teamwork really helped. Mm -hmm. This is very impressive, and this project is very inspiring. I feel. Uh, so, in this project, what are the difficulties and the opportunities that you experience, and you want to share with us? Yeah, well, the difficulties uh, really came, uh, you know, as we uh, we envisaged the project in two thousand nineteen, and mm -hmm. we had worked on all our phases. The phase one would have been all the repairs to the external parts of both the main building and the annex. The annex was always neglected, as Ajay mentioned, in 1938 it was added, but it was never repaired. So we got an opportunity to look into that building also. Uh, as the work was progressing, unfortunately the lockdown happened in February, March 2020, mm -hmm. and we realized that we had opened up the waterproofing, the slabs were open, and with the sudden lockdown everything came to a standstill, so our first task was to uh, was to cover the open areas in such a way that the, when the monsoon happens, we bomb it does withstand very severe monsoon. So we didn't want to take any chances. So as soon as the uh, the lockdown allowed you certain provisions to be uh, you know to, to be relaxed, the first thing the cost was to cover the uh, cover the roofs which were open up in a, such a manner in a temporary in a temporary shed. Uh, and that was a nightmare because all the artifacts were there and the whole museum's, uh, you know, collection was uh, at risk. So we managed to do that. Uh, that was a very difficult, challenging period, uh, creating a lot of hard ones. Uh, and unfortunately, we also witnessed two cyclones, but fortunately, we shared, uh, managed to protect it and we could carry out the work. Uh, we had a problem of uh, lack of labor, the, the labor which was working, the, but the people who, the skilled craftsmen who were working, went to their villages and there were no one uh, to be here. So we had to wait for them to come back. Mm -hmm. Then materials were not being easily available either. So these were some, I'm sure these were the challenges which everyone met uh, during the global pandemic, which were which happened. And so we lost a good amount of crucial time. Uh, on the other way, the positive experiences were that since the museum was shut for public for a very long time, uh, the Director General, uh, Mr. Mukherjee, took a very good decision that we should take advantage and start undertaking the interior works of the interior refurbishment, which was, uh, which was planned to be in phase two and phase three. So we plugged in phase two, which was the interior and the dome, which was the most important part. We took advantage of uh, the museum being shut completely and we could erect a scaffolding which went up 110 feet and also covered the dome uh, throughout so that we could carry out a very detailed study and repairs to it. So these were the positive parts of, uh, of, the, of the lockdown, but the negative parts which I've explained, the labor and other components were there. Ajay, if you want to add something. Yeah, in fact, CSK is, is probably one of the uh, museums in the world which is not actually supported by the Indian government. If you observe actually most of the major museums in the world, they are supported either partially or fully with the respective government. So the challenge actually uh, how we continue this work actually without losing the museum for the visitors. So, and the entire project was planned accordingly that museum will not be closed for the visitors while the project will be continued. But then, as Vikas has rightly said, within the six months of the commencement of the project, pandemic is started. We waited for one or two months, and thereafter, we changed our strategy. We prepared our plan actually how can we execute the project during the pandemic and turn this difficult situation into an opportunity. And thereafter, we shifted our entire focus from interior exterior restoration to the interior restoration. We shifted all our objects which are on display. So we made sure that to uh, under to take the opportunity of working under this situation, there has to be safe environment for our, our uh, project team, even for the labors, contractors. So we made sure that the, all the objects on the display of the museums are shifted and kept in the safest location. And that was actually one of the actually strategy which worked, which actually enabled us to take more riskier decisions and continue the process. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you both. So I think the following related question, maybe we can talk more details about your conservation work. So I'm wondering uh, what are the lessons that we can learn from this project uh, in terms of the uh, managing and achieving the good quality of conservation work, especially during the global pandemic? Yeah, I think uh, one major advantage which this uh, last campus had was that it had uh, the, uh, you know, there was in-house staff which was staying uh, within the campus. And that was uh, uh, a major uh, advantage that you had the security, you had the admin staff. So, you know, people didn't have to travel and they looked after the uh, the, uh, the uh, museum. Uh, they were available 24 by 7 to look after it. Uh, the other thing was the, uh, the, the, as I mentioned to you, the work which was divided. Uh, we had some work which was related to traditional masonry and work. So there was a lot of damage which had happened to the stone chajas, uh, to the, uh, the minarets, uh, to the uh, minarets and the jalis. So we had to reconstruct some of these uh, four uh, areas into matching, either repair it or to get new material which was alike and to do that, which is quite a standard conservation exercise. Mm -hmm. I think the challenge was uh, when it came to the dome, a lot of detailed studies were done and we found that the concrete was good. Whatever strengthening was required with the help of a good team of structural engineers, we carried that out and we could manage to achieve it. And the other important thing which was there was to introduce the new uh, services or new uh, needs which were which the museum had of better lighting, uh, better display, uh, and to refurbish and to give it a kind of a uniform character, which helps to take the museum into the next century. Thank you, thank you. This is great to know. And I think you really lead a very good uh, team uh, to make this project possible. So uh, could you give us more details about the formation of your team and how did this team orchestra to work together in the face of challenges? As, a, as per vision practice, actually any for major project, we have the uh, monitoring committee to whom we have to report the progress of the project. So before uh, this project actually uh, uh, the agreement signed in 2018, but as I told you in 2016, we started the uh, basic report, uh, fabric status report and based on the plan was built. Once the plan was prepared and it was the financial support was identified, then actually we formed the team actually because conservation consultant he actually took the charge of the entire project and then we have to make sure that there's a different different team that project exhibition team project supervisor engineers are appointed and we made sure that the entire team is meeting on a weekly basis every friday we used to meet and we understand the uh, we are tracking the project and if any difficulties are there used to correct the uh, difficulties on time on a weekly basis because if you can explain on the, your technical uh, team, how we can explain. Yeah, so I think the advantage given was that uh, there was a freedom to choose the right consultants uh, as uh, for me as an architect. So I could appoint the structural engineer uh, with whom I was comfortable and who would do the best justice. Uh, similarly, a uh, very good lighting expert uh, and MEP expert were, you know, who worked with me in the past. Uh, I had the freedom to choose them. So it was a team of, uh, you know, people who, uh, as consultants, we worked together and it was easier. Now, when it came to the contractors, we chose contractors who had executed similar works in the past. And what we did was we divided the works into different parts. One was the external repairs, which was something which was the traditional uh, facade repairs with stone and lime water. The mm -hmm. other was the repairs to the concrete which was a specialized team who had to do this thing and we allotted the work to that agency. And the third component was the dome and the interior refurbishment, which is something which was, uh, you know, uh, maintaining uh, and painting and doing the electricals and other work. So that's how we could manage to execute uh, uh, this very large task in a very systematic, organized manner uh, with weekly meetings and a great team efforts. Thank you. Thank you both. I think we can also learn a lot from your project. So uh, my last question, so what are the guidelines and recommendations that you like to share with other cultural heritage projects in the country and even across the region? Well, I think it's very important and I think we were fortunate to have a very clear brief, uh, which, so if you have a clear brief that helps 
uh, to make your project very clear. So and we also had a deadline of a centenary which was happening. So all these two things uh, uh, helped in us to plan. And when, uh, once it was planned, as Ajay mentioned, we were fortunate to have good funding, which happened. And uh, then it was to uh, execute the same. Uh, what we realized and what is a lesson for all uh, uh, others to follow is you should always have your plan B ready in case if plan A fails. I think that's something which was very important, which we learned. Uh, this is how uh, this whole exercise has been successful because it was a risk to take to do the interiors during the time when the museum was shut. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was a very calculated, well, uh, you know, it was a very uh, well taken risk. And since we had a deadline that the centenary date was arriving, so we had to achieve to complete it kind of a thing. Uh, I think uh, it, another in hindsight, it is always good to divide and distribute the work so that you know the work keeps happening it doesn't stagnate if some one agency has a problem and uh and, and i think it's a good team effort which really pays the dividend and uh, it was a pleasure working on this project it was actually the proper uh, planning coordination and the reporting particularly in our project actually this is the dcs foundation has supported we made sure that each and every progress of the project is reported to them and at the same time, uh, CS English team, consultant teams, contracted teams, we made sure that we are working together and our deadlines are very clear in our minds. That was actually, we ensured that there is the, in each and every member is understanding the objective of the project. Mm -hmm. Thank you both. So we still have a bit time remaining. Uh, so Vikas and Ajay, if you have anything you really want to share with our audience, uh, or even like the information we need to know if we want to visit a museum. Uh, so now the floor is all yours. Uh, well, I'll leave to Ajay to uh, answer that also, but I would just like to share that uh, this is my second project, which has uh, uh, received an award of excellence. Uh, earlier, I was fortunate to work on Gauda Jilad Museum, which is also in Mumbai, which was in 2005. So uh, it's always such a pride occasion to get the highest award of UNESCO. And uh, uh, it's been a pleasure to work on uh, this building. Uh, of course, there were uh, very uh, difficult situations and times. Uh, you know, when the whole pandemic happened, we didn't know what it was. But in the end, it's been a happy ending and it's been very satisfying. Okay. Yeah, for me, actually, it is a fortunate and lucky that uh, to work under the leadership of Mr. Mukherjee because in last 15 years, we have worked on the Visitors Facility Center, Children's Museum Project. Even in 2010 also, I told you actually that there, at that time also we issued the UNESCO award. So we got an opportunity to work on the major projects. Uh, it is, as I told you, since the museum is not supported, we need to focus on the project we can actually uh, improve the image of the institution. I also would like to mention here that after getting this UNESCO award and this completion of the restoration of the museum, we observed that post pandemic there is almost 20 to 25 percent increase in the domestic visitor. And we can see this impact on the visitors and our audiences that appreciation that we are getting from them. I think that's that's a very important point because if you do a good successful work or a project, uh, you know, its uh, rewards are seen when the people actually start appreciating and the footfall increases. That's great, indeed. So uh, thank you so much, Vikas and Ajay. And I'm very glad to talk to you today. I believe our audience of the best in heritage would appreciate this interview video. And thanks again. And we wish you the very success and have a good one. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Bye.